Okay, looking at a study today about blame. And it goes all the way back to Genesis. Genesis 2, 16 and 17. The Lord God commanded the man, the Adam, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So, here we have God commanding the first man ever, Adam. And the command is not to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge good and evil. Very simple. That tree there, don't eat it. We in the Bible and in our lives have commands, laws, directions of things we can and we cannot do. We have the commands and directions from the Bible. We have it from our parents. We have it from the government. And we have it from teachers. There are things that people tell us what we cannot and can do. Some of it's correct and some of it may be wrong. But God has set over man other men. He has set forth a government and the Bible says through Paul and Peter we're to obey the government. We like it or not, we gripe or complain. There are regulations out there. So Genesis 3, 6 after God commands the man and we know chapter 3 Eve had a little discussion with the serpent and it came to be that she took the fruit of the tree of, of uh, good and evil and her and Adam ate that fruit that God told them not to eat. And God shows up on the scene. 3.6 When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eye and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So that's a violation of the commandment of God. What did God say in 2, 16, 17? He said, don't eat. What did they do in 3, 6? They ate. They disobeyed God. And I've done many lessons about that. And that's not the lesson. So what did Adam and Eve do? They ate the fruit. Which fruit? The tree of knowledge, good and evil. And God told them, Genesis 2, 16 and 17, not to. Now, didn't Eve know? Genesis 3, 3, just a little side note. But the tree of the but the tree, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. But she had an idea. So, did Adam and Eve obey God? No. Have we ever done anything that we were told and we did not do it? Yes. Disobeying God is a sin. And that's not what we're talking about, but this is an object lesson. Now, Let's run over to James 4.17. Real quick. We'll be back to Genesis. James 4.17. The Bible says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him, it is sin. Did Adam and Eve knew what was good? Yeah, not to eat that fruit. Did they eat that fruit? Yeah, what happened? They sinned. So is it good to obey God, parents, teachers, and the government? Yes. Is it good to disobey God, parents, teachers, and the government? No. So Adam and Eve sinned and not doing what God had told them to do. And I, I preach about that all the time. Called rebellion. 
Now Genesis 3, 8 to 11. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And he said, uh, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Where are you, Adam? God knew. He said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Because that was because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten the tree which I commanded thee that thou shalt not eat? Now sin brings fear. Why do we not owe up to our sins? To the person that we sinned against? Why do we not go up to the boss and say, Boss, I, I broke this item. Lord, I ruined this uh, contract. Or I made that customer very unhappy. Fear. Fear of consequence. Fear of losing the job. Fear of being scolded. Fear, fear, fear from doing wrong. And who wants to be caught doing wrong? No one. I mean, do you like to be caught doing something when it, when you're do, when you're doing it wrong? Does that please you? If you are, you're sick. Now, Genesis 3.11, God is almighty and he knows everything. God is holy and righteous and he knows it all. Proverbs 15, verse 3, the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the evil and the good. Why would God ask a question that he already knew? And have we not ever been asked by somebody... A question that they already knew the answer to? I mean, what about if you're in a classroom with an instructor? All right, can, someone in the class, can you tell me what one plus one is? Well, the instructor definitely knows what that is. I mean, come on, you know the answer. But they want to know if we know the answer. And the circum circumstances thereof. God is trying to get Adam to do something here. I mean, he's the one in charge. He was the one that God told, don't eat that fruit. Now, he probably heard it off a second hand. Not told. He wants Adam to confess his disobedience. He wants Adam to come clean. He wants Adam to know, I already know what you did, now just tell me what you did. And the best things in life is to be honest and correct with a good character. When we have done something wrong, we need to go to the person in charge, the person that we offended, and we need to make it right, and we need to owe up to it. And I'm not preaching the clouds, I've done that. And there have been places at the workplace, man, I went to the boss's office, shut the door and said, you know what, this, I did this thing and I broke it, it didn't turn out right. And once it didn't work out. But other times, you know, the boss was able to do things. So, he wants Adam to confess his disobedience. He wants Adam to confess his sin. Now God is not making Adam to do it. God began with a simple question. And God is not going to drive us to confession. It's a free will. It's something that we want to do. Though it may cause consequences in our life, God wants us to confess and to repent, which is not taught in churches today. And yet we see it in Genesis chapter 3, the very first sin of man. And the questions that we see for this illustration are, who took the cookies from the cookie sheet? 
Now, sometimes a parent may not know if there's a couple children in the house, but if there's one child in the house, pretty much who made this mess in the living room? Who broke the lamp? How about this one? Did you wash your hands? I mean, if, if you got mud and, and goop over your hands, that, that seems like a silly question, but that's a question of sarcasm, like you need to go wash your hands. And then did you finish your homework? Some of these questions are already known. Some of these questions will get you to do what you haven't done. Or undo what you've done. And by asking the basic question, it leaves us the opportunity to confess our sins without force. And when you've done harm some way, something I have done to you or against you, you got to owe up to it. Because God already saw. And a person of character will stand up to the plate and say, it was me. Would you want somebody to give you a sincere apology and confession? Of course you would. I mean, if somebody took your, bo your book and would you like... You know, they come up to you, here's your book. Uh, I need an answer. I need something out of it. You weren't around. I'm the one that took it. Here it is. I'm sorry for not asking. Or would you want somebody, you know, Fred over there. He's the one that took your book. Come on, Fred. Apologize for him to making your book. Which one would you want? Would you want Fred to come to you and say, you know, I'm really sorry, but I needed it or... It got my attention. I'm sorry. Or would you want somebody to apologize because they're being made to apologize? There's nothing more than with, with a parent. Now come on, say you're sorry. A child don't mean it. So you teach a child, just say you're sorry, you can get it over with. No, you got to train that child what sorry means. Many people appear before a judge in a court. Uh, I'm sorry. You know, so add a little bit of crocodile tears, you'll make the judge feel, oh, okay, I'll let you go. So, God is pleased when we come forward. I did it. I'm sorry. Without pressure. That is what pleases God. When we confess our sins. And too many, we point out other people's, well, you know, in our minds, our family, and, uh, you know, our talking with our, our, our brethren and, you know, you see that family, you see that person, you see what they, what about you? So let's go to Genesis 3.12. And a man said, answering to God, the woman whom thou gavest me to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. So, What did Adam just do? Who ate the fruit? You'll say Adam and Eve. Or Eve and Adam. Did Adam know better? Yes. Did Eve hold a gun to Adam's head? Here, I'm going to make you eat this. No. Adam is guilty. Genesis 2, 16 and 17. God told him what? not to do. In Genesis 3, 6, he did exactly what God told him not to do. Adam's guilty. Did Adam take it? Yes. Did he eat it? Yes. Adam's guilty. So what should have Adam done when God questions him? In verse 11. God, I ate it. Whatever reason... Whatever excuse, I, I ate it. I don't know. I'm just saying, I ate it. I don't know if it would have been an apology or what. That's not recorded because that's not what happened. Instead, we get blame. In Genesis 3 12, did Adam confess his sin? Did Adam say, Yes, Lord, I ate it? 
No. Did Adam apologize for doing wrong? No. He didn't. Adam in verse 12 has done what the what the Laodicean church has done. And what the world used to do. Are you charged with this crime? Yes. Well, who made you do it? My grandparents. My mother. I grew up in the ghetto. Uh, we didn't have no money when we grew up. And the uh, education system, including the schools and the medical field, has been taught in people that just blame others like Adam did. goes all the way back to Genesis 3. When you are caught with a sin, and you are caught with a crime. Adam's crime is rebellion and stealing from God. And Adam has done what the shrinks have told many people. It is somebody else's fault. It can't be your fault. And thus new paper, newspapers and people who come up with these surveys and they write these books and they, they have these theses. And it is... The person's background. That person's not really so bad. It, it was how he was brought up. Adam didn't live in a ghetto. Adam wasn't poor. I don't know what color Adam was. Adam had a perfect environment before he fell. And he still fell. And in that perfect environment, without any sin, he sinned against God. And then when he sins, he hides himself and he goes up to God and God says, okay, what'd you do? She did it. This comes back from the very first time man has sinned. That person did. He did it. And did not owe up to their sin. Now, what did Adam do? He blamed Eve. Was it Eve's fault? Well, she gave him the fruit. That don't make it her fault. He could have taken that fruit and grabbed himself a stick and played baseball and, sh and nailed it across over the out in the outfield. He could have taken that fruit, stumped it on the ground, and made sure no one else could eat it. He could have called upon God at that moment and said, God, come here, we got a we got problem. We got a sincere problem. Or when God says, oh, Adam, did you eat of that fruit? And it was not the proper response. And when, when you have any public ministry and you're preaching to them about Jesus, oh, I'm a good person. Well, the Bible says, no, you're not. I'm good. I got a religion. Blame the religion. So... This is not the proper response to God. They made me do it. She made me do it. He made me do it. That's improper. So, okay, Eve gave him the fruit. But did Eve force him to eat? No, she gave him the fruit and he ate it. Adam sinned in his own doing. He could have said no. The Bible says he was right there. He could have stopped the whole thing. But we're not looking at that right now. So how is it Eve's fault? I mean, she didn't deck him. She didn't force him. She didn't connive him. She did not do anything. Here, eat. Okay. And he knew that that fruit was not to be eaten. And the world calls this peer pressure. And in the Bible it's called sinning. And you find the illustration in Proverbs chapter 1, which we won't go there. But you know, when somebody comes up to me, let's, let's go do something wrong. Let's go do a crime. Let, let, let's go murder somebody, Proverbs chapter 1. No! And they 
If you do get involved in such a crime and you stand before that judge, well, they wanted me to come with them. That judge ain't going to give a flying care. Well, that's okay, Junior. If they wanted you to go and you were forced to go, all right, you can go home. No. It's called a betting. You hang out with the wrong people and something happens, you're in trouble. I mean, you get in with a guy who, who's just wicked and violent. He gets in your car. He says, hey, you know, stop over that convenience store. I want to get us some beer, or soda, or whatever. And you stop in. He runs in. He, he, he kills the, the keeper and steals the money and runs out to the car. And you drive off. You are part of that murder. You are part of that crime. Well, he forced me. No, you could just stop the car. You could tell him you're not going any further. And the Bible calls this peer pressure, the world's word, is called sin. And peer pressure shows up in the Bible. So again, Proverbs chapter 1. And Adam's using peer pressure as a excuse. Well, you know, if I didn't eat that fruit with Eve, you know, she wouldn't like me or uh, whatever. wrong it is not proper it is not biblical to blame someone else now if Eve had forced that fruit into his mouth and she didn't I mean she would have wrestled him down to the ground and opened his jaws up threw that fruit in her mouth and made him chew it okay it's not what happened And many of our sins we do because we want to do it. And there's been no force by God, and there's been no force by the devil, and there's been probably no force from others. And sometimes we're trained into it. And if you are if you are the guilty party. You and no one else. You're guilty. Would it be proper to say to that friend, your brother, sister, or whoever you've done it, I, it was a dog that did it. Would that be proper? Who broke the lamp? Well, the dog did it. And the dog didn't do it. No. Would it be proper to say dad did it? And dad didn't do it. No, that's not proper. If you broke the lamp, if you sinned against God and somebody else, the proper was response would be, I did it. Again, that's not being taught, taught in a Latin church age. And would you be pleased if others blamed you when you did not do it. No, you wouldn't. So if you would not be pleased to be blamed, why would you think somebody else would be pleased when you blame them? You live up in a mess of world here. So we got a blame problem here. So Psalms 51. How should we act when we sin? Guilty. When we are guilty, we ought to be guilty. And there will be consequences that you're going to have to fear, but should have thought about that before you sinned. Psalms 51 verse 3. Now did Adam do this? For I acknowledge my transgressions. Did Adam say I ate the fruit? No. His response was, Eve made me. Or the woman that thou gave. And notice also he blames God. He says, the woman that thou gavest me. So see God, if you would not have given me her that, I would not have sinned because it was your fault for putting her in my life. You know God, if you didn't have me raised up in this particular neighborhood, if you had me grown up in a better neighborhood, well, it would. it's your fault God. And that's seriously wrong. 
For I acknowledge my transgressions. There is the first part of our sin. Acknowledge you have transgressed against God and maybe others. And when we sin, we sin against God as Christians. Unsaved sin before God. Sometimes others are involved. So, the answer to Psalm 51 verse 3 was, I did it. Adam sinned, and we sinned. And verse 2, continue, uh, verse 3, and my sin is ever before thee. Again, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and good. God knew exactly what Adam did. There's no fooling God. There's no psychology against God. There is no blame against God. Either you did it, or you didn't do it. And if you did it, you got to owe up and confess. Take the consequences, learn from the consequences, and make it right with others. And when we sin, Proverbs 15, 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Behold, God knows what we're doing. They say Santa Claus. He knows when you have been good. He knows when you have been bad. Throw Santa Claus in the garbage can because it's God that knows, Proverbs 15, 3. And Santa Claus is not a proper God because even if you are a bad child, he will still give you gifts. God will give you correction. Uh, Psalm 51 verse 4. Against thee, God, thee, God only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. So against thee, when we sin, it is against God. And the person that we've done it against or to. But the number one thing when we sin is we sinned against God. We have offended God. And maybe others. I mean, there may be sins in our life that we do. And it doesn't hurt anybody else. I can't think of it, but uh, the illustration is, it hurt God. It offended God, especially when we are children of God. And the Satan accuser of the brethren shows up to God, and you see that? And then God calls down the Holy Spirit, and I, like, well, what do you think about that sin you just did? Well, he did it. And the devil's like, hey, see that? Just like Adam, their great, 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 great grandfather. The only... God is a holy and righteous God. Sinning is not holy and it is not righteous. Even the Laodicean church age says otherwise. I'm going to say it now. I've been restricted to say this. and When you have a church that says it preaches against sin and you put on your church billboard all are welcome, Something's not correct there. Because how can be how can all be welcome if you preach against sin? And oh yeah, you know how many evangelistic people that come into a church and get saved? Truly saved? Not many. So it says, I have sinned. I have sinned, not him, not her, not them. I have sinned against God. And it says, evil in thy sight. Proverbs 15, 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, behold the evil and the good. Now, let's look at it like this. Let's take a sin like drinking beer. You're a Christian, you're saved, you got the Holy Spirit indwelling in you. You are a child of God. And you decide, I'm going to have a can of beer. What can be wrong with it? Is not the Holy Spirit inside you? Are you not supposed to feed the Holy Spirit? Yes, you are. So you give him a can of beer. Through your lips. You sinned against God. 
In Job chapter 1 and 2, God is, is talking to the devil. He says, you see my servant Job? Look at him. And I don't know if God does that about the church, eh? but you know, you see that Christian? That's mine. He's my son. And then you go do something wrong and the devil's like, do you see that? Now, when I grew up in New London as a child, I I understand now that you know I'm 50 years old. I, but back then, I, I always wondered how my mom found out I did things wrong. When I come home, my mom be like, "Okay, why'd you do this?" I'm like, oh. and it would be my neighbors, a type of the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit going to God saying, "Hey, you you see what He's subjecting me to." And when we sin, we sin against God, especially the Christian when he has the Holy Spirit in him. I mean, I really, really, really suspect that the Holy Spirit would be so unpleased when a Christian is doing illegal drugs. I think the, I think the Holy Spirit would be really grieved, I think the Bible said, that out of the mouth of the Holy Spirit, your mouth as a Christian, you bad mouth others. We sin against God. We, me, the sinner. It is our own sin. Now, listen, there may be, if there's other people involved, that's between them and God. I'm talking about me. If I get involved with a sin, whether I do it singularly, me, or somebody else is involved, I'm talking about me. I'm talking about you singularly. God can deal with the others. I've said Adam and Eve sinned. God went right to Adam and said, Okay, Adam, let's put it out in a plate. No pun intended. If someone else was in on your sin, like Eve was, that's between Eve and God. When God came up in Genesis chapter and said, Adam, where art thou? He didn't say Adam and the woman. Adam, did you eat of that fruit? He didn't say eat. He would have dealt with her afterward. If Adam would confess his sin and say, God, I've sinned against you. Uh, I'm sorry. Whatever the circumstance, whatever he would have said. God said, okay. And I don't know what God would have done. That's not recorded because that did not happen. And I would think within time, God would turn to Eve and say, okay, explain yourself. Did you eat of the fruit? And he would expect the same thing from Adam, from her. To repent, to confess, to get right. Do you know what is right? And did you not do right? To him that knows to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. We have sinned against God and maybe against other men. But our sins are against God. So, let's take me. God comes with me and says, Dolly, did you do that? What is the response if I'm guilty? I have sinned against God. Psalm 51 verse 3. I have acknowledged my transgressions. And my sin is ever before thee, me. Against thee... Thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight. That's the response. God, I'm guilty. And the confession would be, 1 John 1, 8 and 9. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Adam never said he sinned. He never repented of his sin. He did not acknowledge his sin. He took a bypass and said, her fault. But if we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful to judge to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteous. God would have cleansed Adam. And when we say we have no sin, how do we say it? It's their fault. The Department of medicine the department of schools and the greater advancement of children have made the children to think we don't sin because 
It's their fault. And government teaches that too. I didn't do it. And that's saying we have no sin. We confess our sins. It's my fault. Result, when I come clean, it's confession and not blame and repenting and taking action and God will forgive us and God can cleanse us and we can receive that pardon where a pardon can only be received by a guilty party and you've got to admit you are guilty to get that pardon now when you read Genesis 3 there is no mention of any forgiving nor cleansing nor is there repentance neither did they take responsibility for their sins as we go back to Genesis chapter 3 I'm going to put out a question and many of you may disagree with me because Adam you know killed an animal and clothed them for their nakedness I don't think Adam got any forgiveness or cleansing in a moment we're going to look at Eve I don't think they got it because there's not recorded in Genesis 3 in Genesis 4 in Genesis 5 there is no recording of Adam and Eve ever saying, God, it's my fault, and God, I'm sorry. Nowhere. Instead, they get sorrow, cursings, and troubles, and death. Now, Genesis 3.13. Adam did not answer correctly. And the Lord God said unto the woman, okay, I'm going to deal with the woman. You blamed her. What is this that thou hast done? Which she did. She gave him the fruit. Not by force. And the woman said. The serpent beguiled me. And I did eat. The second human being on this earth. The first two human beings. In their sin. When it came to the time to confess their sin. Before God Almighty. Both of them. Said. He did it. Not my fault. Isn't that remarkable? And then you're going to call why, wonder why. Why don't many people get saved when I witness to them on the street? Because they're not sinners. They've never been sinners. They're not guilty. They're good. They don't need God. What are those roots? They're great, 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 great grandparents, Adam and Eve. When a man became a sinner, Genesis 3, one of his excuses is, your fault. And that has been promoted through the schools, that has been promoted through the, through the colleges, that has been promoted into science and into and to psychology, and he did it. Now, one more place, Genesis 4. We're not going far, are we? You can preach many lessons out of Genesis 3. Genesis 4, verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Cain killed Abel. Everybody knows that story. Genesis 4, 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? Now does not God know? Yeah, he know. Uh, verse 10. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me. God knew what happened to, to Abel. What's God doing with Cain? Doing the same thing he did with his father and mother. I'm giving you opportunity to confess. I'm giving you the opportunity to repent. And upon what you do, I will give you forgiveness and I will give you cleansing. 
But Cain has followed the way of his parents. Said, well, watch, watch, watch. Verse 9. Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Look at the excuse now. I don't know. Not my big deal. Not my problem. And have you not heard somebody say that? Have you not ever been in the workplace? Have you ever not been in school? That's not my problem. That's not my job. Where did that come from? Genesis 4. Where did he did it? Where did that come from? Genesis 3. And I don't read anywhere where Cain got forgiven or cleansed by God. Genesis 4, Genesis 5, Genesis 6, Genesis 7. I don't see anywhere where I don't see anywhere Adam and Eve and Cain were ever forgiven or cleansed. God killed those animals for clothing for Adam and Eve because they were naked. Adam and Eve got sweat, they got sorrows, she got to be under her husband. And the, 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 the sweating and the working the fields with pain and labor and death. Cain got to be a vagabond. He got a mark on him. And he got booted out from God's presence. Neither three of them got forgiveness or cleanliness from God. I don't see it. Now when we read Psalm 51, that was about David. David committed the, the preacher's two ultimate big sins. Adultery and murder. While the preachers themselves commit uh, pride and arrogance. And uh, uh, some of them are native to see in church. You know, we're the, we're, the, we're the committee of the church. We're the office of the church. And you're just a low peon. I believe he said that. And David, when we read Psalm 51 and the response of David's sin, when Nathan said, Thou art the man, what did David got, get? David said, I am guilty. David said, I am a sinner. I have sinned against you, God, and Bathsheba, and her husband, and the nation of Israel, and Joab. But I have sinned against you, God, David said. And David got a, David got a forgiveness and he got a confession. He's got confess. He's got cleansing. Because David confessed his sin. David took control of his skin. I, and I mean taking control of his sin is God, it's my fault. He could have said, hey, listen, God, that she was out there bathing herself. That woman ought not have been bathing herself. How dare she bathe herself out there? No, he didn't. He says, thou art the man. I'm the man. I'm guilty. Adam, her fault. Eve, serpent's fault. Cain, ain't my job. And have you not found these three people in the world of life a blame? And it's not my job. And the few you find out there like David. It's my fault. I'm guilty. And as soon as Nathan said, Thou art the man, David repented and got right. Adam, where art thou? Adam, did you eat that tree? She did. Eve, did you eat? He made me do it. Cain, where's your brother? I don't know. It's not my job. My, my brother's keeper. David? Yes, Lord, I have sinned against you. And look at the, look at the four lives we looked at. And God knows. And God will pose that what you will think a stupid question before him. Like, our parents would pose stupid questions to us. But down deep inside, we know. <laughs> they know. They know that what I know, that I'm guilty. And I will get out of my guiltiness if I blame somebody or something else. 
Now you may get that, get away with that with your mom or dad. You may get away with that with the police department. You may get away from that from a judge sitting on the bench or your teacher, but you're not getting away with it with God. You cannot be dumb and ignorant before an all-knowing God, almighty God, that saw your evil and your good. And the thing is, and you know there's consequences, that's where the fear is. Just walk up to the person, your mom, your dad, the teacher, your boss, or whoever say, you know, can we sit down and talk for a moment? I know what the object of this of the sin is whatever it is you broke something you took something whatever it is and I want to tell you right now even before it's you know it, it comes to your attention do it before it comes to your attention I broke it I stole it I've taken it I'm sorry I got saved in April 21st, 1987. And April 22nd, after church service in the morning, I went home that afternoon. And I went to my dad and I witnessed my dad and told him he's going to hell. Now he, he hasn't got saved yet. And then I, I don't know how long it was after that, but I sat down and wrote my dad a letter and said, Dad, I, he knew. I think he told me he did. I said, Dad, I... I he had a cash box. I said, Dad, I would steal money out of that cash box. $20 at a time. And I said, Dad, I wrote this down in writing. You tell me how much I owe you. Whether I don't owe you or not. But whatever you tell me I owe you, I will make it right. Somehow in some way. And he said, somehow I found out whether he told me that. Or, but, but he knew. And my dad said, hey, you know, I forgive you. You don't owe me anything. You know what a great feeling that is? Have you been cleansed of that guilt by God and by somebody you've done wrong? Even if I had to pay money back. Once I paid that last dollar, that that. And the ability to say, I'm paying off that debt. And another thing I, I want to add as a PS to this message. When we sin against people, we got to get it right with God. We've got to confess our sins. Okay, and some people think, oh, that, that's it, it's done. All right, we've gotten it right with God. Now, here's the hard part. What about the person we offended? There's too many Christians out there, good and bad Christians. They have offended somebody. And they are in offense of God and Jesus. Because the Christian has offended them. And he had never tried to make it right with them. And they may have been just like my dad. Okay, I forgive you. Don't worry about it. Or you may have to pay. Make it right. There are some people out there, you've been involved in a crime and you're saved now. you got to go to the law and say, hey, listen, I'm a Christian now. I wasn't saved back then. Or I would, sorry if you were saved. I committed this crime and no one knew until I come walk in. And there have been Christians who have done that and, and they've gotten mercy from the court. They would come to find out that, you know, the time of the trial has long passed. Yeah, it, it's easy to confess our sins to God. It's easy. I do it. But when we got to face the consequences against our fellow human beings, especially when it deals with the law,
A true confession will you make it right with the persons you offended. Yeah, yeah, we offend against God. We sin against God. But some of our sins are against others. Make it right. Now, I've written emails to a man. And I'm going to honestly tell you, I don't think I sinned against him. Honestly, still to this day, I swear to the Bible. But I'm a sinner. I said, if I've done anything to offend you, if I am so sorry, and he has actually offended us. I'm not going to get into it. But I wrote him an email. I said, listen, I want to tell you, I'm sorry. If I've done anything, you tell me what I've done. I will confess it before you. Confess it before God. We're both Christians. We want to get this thing right. It's troubling my heart. But this is what you've done against me and my family. And that guy sent me an email, and I wrote him a second time, too, and I I got a paper, you know, a sheet of paper in the mail. Oh, and man, he's just, just blasting me out of water. And I tried to make it right. I feel good as I try to make He had a problem against me for some reason. Like I said, I probably was involved in it, but as far as the case is, I don't think we did wrong, but you know what? Sometimes maybe we have to get a hold of somebody and say, listen, you may not know the offense that you've caused to others. Sometimes the offense is in the world if somebody takes you, you know, hey, you got spaghetti on your face. Oh, I didn't know that. Sorry. How's that for confession? That's what God was doing. Adam, come in. He sinned against me. And the improper response, well, she made me do it. Cain, come here. You sinned against me. Am I my brother's keeper? David, come here. Look at your sins. Lord God, I'm sorry. Somebody comes up to you and says, you know, that, sh that nice shirt you got, it's got a stain under your chin. Oh, thank you. Or you can act haphazardly, right? you know. Be angry. Don't be angry. Don't blame. Get it right. With God. And you have, probably have to get it right with someone else too. I'm telling you, there's no clean, cleaner feeling than getting it right with God. And he may still chastise you. Listen, I got when I got in trouble at work and went to my boss, I still got in trouble. Whether I had to sign a paper and put it in my file or money, but I still had to do it. But that builds character because when other times came up at work and they're styling, and it'll be like, no, not styling. Sorry. But when anybody else but styling, I, I, had my, I had one boss tell me one time, he said, listen, if it was you, and I don't even think it was you, he says, you know what? You know what I believe what? I think you would came to me first that day at the end of the shift. That's what my boss told me. If not, you would came the next night you work. If you, he said, your conscience would bother you. You would come to me. That's you. Get that kind of character. Don't sin. <laughs> but if you do sin, John says in 1 John chapter 2, we have an advocate. Jesus Christ. Don't let your sins fall by the wayside. Them seeds will be planted and grow weeds. And you don't want to reap them weeds. Do right. 